to our new circular uh, coffee conversation today. So we are actually kicking off a new theme, our third one for the year, which is going to be about rest and regeneration, which feels like the topic that is not really, not maybe talked as much as it could during this in the circular economy, but we feel that this is really important basically. Um, as part of our well-being and so on. And um, today we actually join with Alice McGigan uh, from the Earth Living Festival and also Alice May Yoga. And Alice, well, I'm, I'm not going to say too much because it's going to be again a very inspiring conversation. So I'll let Erica and Alice do that in a minute. Uh, but just the format as usual. So Erica and Alice will have a conversation for about 20 minutes. Um, and then if you get any questions, just put them in the chat and we'll spend another five, ten minutes at the end um, asking all of that. And the circular coffee conversation, as you know, this is our way to actually bring to life the circular economy and have like informal chats around different topics, basically, um, which we always really like. So I'm going to stop here and pass it on to Erica to kickstart the conversation. Thank you, Sophie, and hello, everyone. Um, yeah, it's great for Alice to join us in a van on a farm <laughs> today. Um, so I think that that will be probably something that we touch on as well in the conversation. But like all of um, the conversations we have, we always start off um, by asking Alice, what circular conversation starter have you brought with you today? So I have for um, my object is a candle. And um, yeah, the reason for that is that I find a lot of inspiration with candles and I guess um, they remind me of um, the fires that we would have sat around, our ancestors would have sat around and kind of um, this fire as a source of inspiration and like, it just feels like a lot of the time when there's a fire, there's like a, a gathering of people around that fire. And I mean, there's like a lot of um, kind of, I guess, history as to, the ways in which we would have like held ceremonies in spaces when we were um, back in the past that are kind of re-emerging now in new ways which feel really powerful and important so um, yeah the candle was the source of inspiration and also it reminded me it always reminds me of this um, quote from the Buddha which I won't remember exactly but something about when you share the light of a candle it doesn't take anything away from that light so there's light that fire can keep growing and um, like the happiness doesn't deplete from being shared that type of thing so yeah source of inspiration candle circle oh, yeah <laughs> that's lovely and i suppose like you're saying there's so many different meanings or ways that you can can use it and i think it yeah. is probably something that a lot of people do actually almost associate with, with putting on to have a special time or rest <laughs> mm, <laughs> um yeah. uh, at the same time uh, you know people always say oh have a bath and, and all of those kind of things. Yeah, so the that, yeah there, there's a strange light. connection, isn't there, with, with, with yeah. people and a small bit of light uh, in our life as well. No, that, yeah, that's really nice. And I think, I suppose, it probably touches also on a few different perspectives that you, you bring to, to your work and, and your life. Um, so if you mentioned you both run uh, Alice May Yoga, but also the Earth Living Festival, I'd like to pick up and ask a little bit, of, I suppose, about your, your journey to, to yoga and, and how you you got there as a kind of a mm. sure so it started when I was at university and for me the yoga practice was um quite spontaneous a friend just suggested should we go along and try a session we're both quite stressed um I had a lot of work to do and I think back then it was certainly just like a time and space thing there wasn't a particularly like deep meaningful reason why I was going um it was just really nice to rest um did like lots and lots of stretching um I felt like my nervous system was a lot calmer and yeah it just was simply just that and then when I went home sort of between the uni breaks and just after uni I started to do yoga outdoors in Caversham Court Gardens funnily enough with a teacher in Reading and I must have been I guess like 19 20 um at the time and that kind of continued yeah after university as well and it was just really wonderful to be practicing in nature um me and my mum used to go together and uh and then um she actually she she became ill for a period of time which then actually led my practice to become more um there was a bit of a deeper reason for going then it became more of a rock bed for 
uh, yeah, that time in our lives where things were a bit more challenging and it became something that um, helps to uh, support mental well-being for me and my family and just kind of guided us through those more heavier times. So that's where the practice developed and grew and I felt like, oh, you know what, well, actually something, there's something really special about this and I feel like this is something in my life that I really connect to, has a lot of meaning. I wasn't really sure what, where I was going to go after that um, study period and so I decided I wanted to travel so I decided to go to India and do a course out there and I didn't even plan to be a teacher at that point I just wanted to learn more about yoga and a lot of the time people will go and do these month-long teacher trainings in India just to really experience the practice in a more intense way but then in the course of that month teaching it the um teaching the practice and uh getting to know it more than inspired me to do many more trainings and courses and and follow that path for yeah the next seven years to where we are now so that's where it all started I like um what you said also about I think I've joined one of your, your practices in Caversham Court Gardens and and being out in nature around that how do you see and I suppose in the circular economy um the term regenerative design is often used about in terms of materials, of products, and maybe mm. partly growing food and things. But where do you see the connections with this is yoga and nature um, and its, its role, I suppose, for, for humans <laughs> uh, yeah. and, and well-being? Sure, I think rege and regeneration is such a big question, a uh, big word in the field of well-being and um, that whole nature-nurture connection as well. And I think... Um, part of it is that there's this whole badge of busyness that a lot of us are wearing and we kind of get on these hamster wheels and these cycles and there's this um I, I guess a lot of people wake up and they're straight into their work or there's this need or desire to achieve and prove that that busyness or that achievement outside of to, to the world outside of ourselves um and regeneration is is I guess in the connecting through yoga and through well-being is that space of um of rest of renewal and the importance of that if you take that time in the middle of the day just to lie down for 10 minutes or even a few times a day then how how that really helps to recharge and to um to ensure that we don't burn out because sometimes we don't realize what burning out feels like or it has many different capacities it's not just feeling tired or exhausted it's many other things as well so i guess it's taking that time to to have the space and to to connect more with natural cycles and natural rhythms so that could be inspired by connecting to the rhythms in our body um our breath uh, yeah our, our natural cycles of um throughout the day for example or if you're a woman those kinds of um moon cycles and then in terms of nature it's connecting to the seasons seasons in the year or um even like different sacred earth celebrations that type of thing so we can draw a lot of inspiration from the rhythms in the around like in the world in the natural world around us but also from our own natural rhythms as a way of guiding us into a way of being that that includes more 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 regeneration more rest because we can't just keep kind of going in that linear trajectory and this is where i really like this whole focus on circ circular sort of um imagery because I, I think the more that I've developed in my own practice as well of yoga the more I've opened up to the fact that there's a lot of like going back back and forwards as a way of seeing the world like we progress and then we sort of you know that whole expression take a step back to mm -hmm. go forwards and what would it be like if we just explored ways of moving and ways of being that were less in those linear trajectories and more um circular so I guess in a movement sense that would be uh, instead of doing like backwards and forwards uh, sun salutations or um, things like that it would be more like how can we get off of our mats how can we dance around how can we explore moving in ways that are um, more spontaneous going diagonally um, moving in more primal ways um, imitating nature animals imitating the world around us or um, just expressing ourselves as 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 nature yeah and and that that cycle yeah i like that kind of analogy of 
of a lot of our lives are often on this trajectory of like success or moving up or, or you know careers or, or things like like that on that, that that kind of straight line to, to something yeah <laughs> um yeah. but actually there is that that element of, of getting more into the, the flow and the cycles of it I know some people actually I work with know how much I go up and down mm -hmm. in a in a in a month and different times and I'm constantly trying to um yeah actually you know think how can you actually design around a bit more of a cycle or a circular mm -hmm. flow of your body and the seasons as well um, which I'm trying to block in summer rest and regenerate <laughs> yeah. after this um what well, one thing that uh, we actually connected and, and, and um, I really loved that you, you really started in Reading is the Earth Living Festival, um, a celebration of what the community, art, nature and, and well-being. And I'd love you to, to share a bit more around that, but also why you thought it was important to, to I suppose, bring these maybe separate um, craft and kind of practices together mm. from, from either the, the art or, or the nature. And, and, yeah, um, so the the reason the festival started was really because <clears throat> in Reading it feels like there's not a lot of um, there's a lot of amazing things happening under the surface so not even under the surface but just in a more of an individual way let's say <clears throat> so like I know from teaching there's an incredible well-being offering there's loads of wonderful teachers and um, and then also through running um, events in the past with an arts organisation, I connected to a lot of different um, artists and um, other creative organisations in Reading and, and then run, working with Natalie from Nature Nurture, made connections like with you, Erica. And so I was seeing all these different aspects that really they don't feel separate, but there's like this natural connection between art, nature and wellbeing. For me anyway, that's what I see when I think about those aspects but a lot of the festivals in Reading felt like it didn't feel like that well-being was really a part of that as much like there were we have a lot of festivals for celebrating theatre and um dance and uh um gin <laughs> They're like we have so we do have yeah, lots of yes. in Reading, <laughs> carnivals yeah we and and that's all and music obviously as well and we've got the massive Reading festival we have like a lot of stuff going on but it just felt like especially since the WOMAG used to be in Reading but it left obviously years and years ago and I used to go to WOMAG when I was a kid and ride on my dad's shoulders and things so it just felt like there was something missing ever since that and I'm not saying the Earth Festival is very different to WOMAG but it's there's an element that's similar in terms of like tapping into the the kind of the well-being aspects and um the nature and the artistry and bringing that together and and the Earth Festival is is a kind of a it's a sober space there's no alcohol there's um yeah it's it's mainly vegan well, it's all vegan vegetarian food so it's just inspiring a different kind of way of, be, of being in a space where you can really make um well-being and collective care the the focus and to see what happens when we come together in that way um and in Caversham Court Gardens is celebrating a space that personally has a lot of meaning for me but also I think hasn't really been um it started to be used more and more in recent years but it has been a space that um hasn't had a lot of activity in it for a long time so it's having a festival there felt like a really um, beautiful coming together and weaving of these different aspects um and how they inspire one another and how um, when we bring these aspects together then a lot of things can come out of that like for example from the one time that we've managed to run the festival in 2019 because obviously of everything that's happened we've not been able to do it since but um on that one occasion there were lots of things that happened afterwards where people were then working together from meeting each other at the festival creating new things and that feels like part of the cycle of regeneration is is also about collaboration as well if that makes sense <laughs> yeah and you know for myself i think what i like about festivals is you can almost use it as a testing melting kind of pot for new ideas and that's actually yeah. I suppose that's what I've done a bit <laughs> as you were joining yeah. the Earth Living Festival and and it sparked off um, a few years ago I had this full studio um, material values and, and mapping and bringing the conversation around the circular economy and it was really interesting because actually there was so much 
interest and knowledge and people were kind of thinking well there's this second hand place here and the, you know and mm. what what that also gave me and then you know linking with with safety data was that you know that, that community feel that this was something that, that people wanted to kind of bring together as well on a very practical sense and I suppose you mentioned Reading Festival one of the really big festivals in Reading which is also known for quite quite large amounts of tent waste and, and other aspects around yeah. you know what festivals uh, bring uh, alongside you know the, the, the fun and an enjoyment thing and you mentioned a few things that you'd taken into account I suppose on a kind of sustainability uh, practical sense as well as the ethos of the, mm. the food choices um, and, and other aspects. What what kind of things organising the festival did you take into account from a sustainability or economy perspective, but also what difficulties really are there and, and barriers? And I know this is something that, that Reading Climate Strategy is quite interested to work on with lots mm -hmm. of different kind of festivals across Reading, like all the ones you mentioned. Um, there's a lot of learning on, on how to put on and maybe more sustainable circular festival or event. Sure. Yeah, it felt really important um, being the Earth Living Festival that sustainability was something that we looked into a lot and that for me was um, an absolute, um, yeah, a really important element to it. But also quite frustrating because, um, yeah, we did the whole, um, the, the year that we ran it, we, we looked into um, biodegradable cups and plates and things like that and um we did go down that route that year but what was frustrating is through the course of then organizing our waste we were then told that we couldn't put all of that that they wouldn't be able to be put into food waste when it's in on a mass scale they can't food has to be separated from biodegradable plates and cup and that was something that i just um i tried to kind of like find other ways but um given the small team that we were in the first year doing it we weren't really able to um solve that one that year so that was something that since that year we've sort of talked about and since then have developed a committee of people where we've got together and started to brainstorm other ways and so one of the ideas that came through from that was to say well actually we won't provide any plates or cutlery or anything and everyone has to bring their own and um, then we had this whole, oh, okay, so where's everyone going to wash up? Are we going to have a big washing up place? And and then when COVID kind of came, it was like, well, how long is that going to go on for? And then if we're going to do it, then we have to sort of think about safety. It just, you know, it's very complicated in a sense, but I'm sure there are simple solutions. And I'd absolutely love to to find out more about what those could be. Um, uh, I, yeah, I think that's in terms of that aspect, that was what we got to. Um, we did have a lot of different sort of bins around the site uh, and people, volunteers that were specifically on duty for making sure rubbish went into the right places and things like that um, trying to reduce waste to that extent no plastic on site people filling up water bottles at the tea ki kiosk um, and then the other thing I guess we considered was solar power and uh, yeah that was something that seemed to be very expensive of the companies that we were working with like the marquee companies that provided our electricity didn't have the solar power generators or um and things like that so um again that would be something that we'd really like to do and almost would love like this festival to pioneer in sustainability in, in reading but again it's finding more resources and information which is where the connection to you erica is amazing to have and yeah yeah and I think it's a really interesting area that I often see early stage businesses or startups or particularly young kind of entrepreneur kind of things often you know it's a place where they can try out their new products or ideas um and, and also recognize some of those problems that you're mentioning so yeah we'll definitely keep an eye out and and see what we can do maybe next year Sophie. somebody, did, well. somebody <laughs> did mention having a bicycle and cycling and yeah that is very healthy isn't it so it's quite fitting for a while <laughs> yeah and also like battery technology um yeah is improving to you know to store solar and then maybe transporters and and things like that as well yeah. but yeah definitely that would be great to work on um, as well. Before um, we check for um, any questions and things from, from the um, audience today, one thing that I think you might have lots of are any tips, maybe over the summer months for 
or ideas for, for rest and re regeneration kind of activities for all practices. Um, mm. Yeah, it's funny because a lot of the time people do associate summer with this very yang energy, the fire, the active, mm. let's do stuff, let's get things done. But I actually feel like it's a really important time to cool down as well to take. So even though um, we also say that winter is a time of rest and regeneration in terms of the cycles of the seasons, just on a very physical level, like being so hot in these months, <laughs> we need cooling in practices to balance out our energy and our bodies. So um, that might take the shape of, of, of literally lying down and resting. And, and I think probably like in the middle of the day, it's a good idea just to take that time just to lie down, even if it's just 10 minutes with no, with no stimulation, you can be on the floor with a pillow under your head or in bed if, you, if you'd like, or wherever you are, if there's somewhere you can go. I know it's difficult in working office spaces, but I almost feel like every workspace should have a little rest and regeneration room where people just go lie down for 10 minutes and it would just massively Im improve our kind of our uh, function for the rest of the day. And um, that, that I think is, it doesn't have to be like some fancy practice. It can just be lying down. Um, if you are interested in, you know, more like yoga practices, then there's uh, obviously a lot of different yin yoga practices you can do out there. And again, they could be 10 minutes long, just nice long um, stretches, just letting yourself drop into a position and be there. Uh, yin and restorative yoga are really wonderful ways and there's loads of practices online and um, in studios in Reading as well um, and yeah even better if you can go I guess be in nature in the shade under a tree um, yes hugging trees yeah, we did a hug a, hug a tree uh, fundraising <laughs> well. I was just thinking also that yeah, right now that's... I'm actually drawn to water everywhere <laughs> Called running water and that, in that Sedonia, old, yeah. rivers and stuff um, the, the blue Absolutely. space and I love wild well. swimming as well it's yeah even at the end of your day you could just go in there's lots of places in the River Thames that are fine to swim in locally and there's a big lake and field that's got to be really nice and if there's a body of water near to you then just going in and dropping to that is a wonderful way of refreshing and recharging nice yeah. I think I'll try and find some Today Walking well. around <laughs> and, and lastly, before handing it to Sophie to check in and if she's got any other ones, um, an organisation topic or individual uh, that would be interested to hear more from or would be interesting for us to kind of check out um, mm. around maybe rest and regeneration or... I don't know if this is really around rest and regeneration, but um, I think, and this is probably something that's come up before, but I, I think a, a few years ago, I came across Kate Rayworth and she's quite well known, isn't she? And I'm sure you know a lot about her, Erica from Donut Economics. But I would love to hear more about that and things related to that and people who are related to that, that theory. And I just, yeah, I would like to understand more about that. I don't think it's not really connected to rest regeneration, but maybe it is. Maybe it's <laughs> well, I think, it, yeah, it does take in more of all of the different kind of sustainable you know the ethical and social and the well-being aspects of yeah the human within the planetary boundaries so yeah nice one i think mm -hmm. i'm signed up to something on friday actually looking at london as a donut city from the donut lab but yeah you can send that one to you if you're interested <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah really it's definitely a really interesting one mm -hmm. um so thank you so much alice i'm just going to pass over to sophie now so don't go <laughs> Yes, as someone opens the door, the holidays are started. So. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I yeah, I absolutely love listening to you. And I think that the way that you describe things and through your voice as well, I feel like so calm, basically, but also like really smiling. So that's that's fantastic. Thank you for all of that. Um, if anyone has got any questions, just put them in the chat. Now is the perfect time. I guess I do have, you know, I, I love the story you were saying about having that pose you know, middle of the day and so on, and coming from the south of France, actually, I feel like those countries that have got warmer weather, like a snack, basically, a siesta after lunch is almost a must. <laughs> but mm. interesting and how, you know, if we listen maybe a bit more to our bodies, we, we can sort of reconnect in that sense. Um, so yeah, I had one question as well, because I really liked what you were saying around 
you know, our busyness, basically, and it's almost like feels like if we're really busy, we're successful and so on. Mm. Us, I've got that desire to pause a little bit, and I think the pandemic has forced us to pause in that respect. Mm -hmm. um, but you still have those jobs and businesses that actually are quite demanding in that sense. So I was wondering whether you put any recommendations for people to really sort of influence that from the inside if they want it throughout their business. Mm. So if you've got a lot of responsibilities and a lot of pressures, how do you weave in the self-care and the, the things that help you to stay in the cycle of regeneration, but also manage and keep on top of those aspects and balance things out? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think there's certainly an element of prioritising, isn't there, in terms of what work actually needs to be done and what work is important and what, what part of it is also... I'm just speaking from experience, but like the perfectionism and how much that can actually prevent us from looking after ourselves um, sometimes because, um, yeah, I just know looking back at the times when I've been extraordinarily busy and like worked 15 hour days and not needed to really do that, but like the where that was coming from um, was a place of like just, um, yeah, needing to get, try and get things perfect all the time. And I think the more that, I've um, let go of that for possibly the more connection to authenticity there's been, but also I think um, the more that I've been able to like take that time to check in and find self-care practices that then mean that you can connect to your centre in a way where you don't then feel the need to um, do as much in that kind of like completed way, like you're, it, it, yeah, more of a space to kind of share things or share your work when it's in the process of being created not rather than already being finished if that makes sense does that it's, it's different for, it depends what work you're doing but um there's a space for that for it to be yeah not completely finished no, I really like I really like that I agree it's like actually less is more and perfection actually yeah because <laughs> you've done a lot so yeah I totally agree and I love as well that connection with your authenticity as you mentioned so that's uh, yeah that is fascinating Can't mm -hmm. well thank you so much Alice we're already getting towards the end of it we could have continued chatting for a long time <laughs> um, but yeah just to wrap it up thanks a million for being with us today um, so for everyone on the call, we're actually going to take a little break in August uh, with Erica and for all of us actually to have that rest and regeneration uh, time and reconnect um, at some point in September. We'll probably wrap up this theme in September and then looking at tech um, to finish the rest of the year. And what we will we'll work on as well with Erica is probably like pointing you to different directions or activities or things that are going on throughout the summer to help that rest and regeneration as well, um, which I think is going to be really exciting for all of us. But um, yeah, so I think that's it really for today. Thank you so much for joining us on View. Have a wonderful summer and we'll reconnect in September. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks, Alice. Thank you.